took you all side, didn't we? Well, good morning. How's everybody doing? It's good to see everybody. Everybody awake and alive? Amen. Hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving. Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving at least? Amen. Amen. Huh? Full of turkey. I heard that there was going to be a shortage on turkeys or something like that. I said, boy, that won't be a good day. Well, it is good to see everybody. Glad that everybody's here. Um, it's been a busy week, hasn't it? It's been a busy week. And uh, I can tell you that I'm ready to be settled and have all this stuff uh past us and and be done with everything so um, hopefully lord willing we'll get to close on our house friday if everything goes good and um, and then the fun begins again so uh anyways we covet your prayers i appreciate uh, your patience and um, your kindness as we have went through this transition and, and uh, everything that has happened and went on, and uh, Amanda's grandfather actually passed this week as well, uh, actually, um, and uh, he wasn't in great health, but uh, he was a good man. I think he was 89, wasn't he 80, 89, right? Something like that. I think he said, I think it was 89, and, uh, but uh, saved. So we know where he's at, amen? amen. And uh, that's the most important thing. And uh, of course, with uh, Sister Madonna's mom, um, we continue to pray for their family and, um, and the church family, amen? amen. So, uh, well, I had to go all the way over to uh, Mountain View this morning. Brother John, I left my Bible over there last Sunday. And uh, I don't know about y'all, but it feels like forever almost since I've been in church. So whenever we miss a day or something, it seems like it's forever. But uh, anyways, uh, finally, finally got it back and, and uh, just glad that we're all still alive and still living and, and the Lord's good. Amen. Amen. Take your Bibles. Come to Ephesians chapter number six this morning. Ephesians chapter number six. We are almost done with the armor of God as we've been talking about and going through the different pieces of armor. But the one thing that uh, I don't know if you've, have you've caught on to yet, and one thing sometimes that's not emphasized as much as actual pieces of armor is some of the words that are being used um, as Paul describes this armor also. Amen. And uh, he uses words like righteousness and faith and salvation and peace and all of these different words that he begins to use to describe this armor. And uh, we'll start in verse number 10 um, <clears throat> just to, uh, as a way of recap here in Ephesians chapter number 6. And notice in verse number 10, Paul writes and he says, Finally, my brethren... Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And we've talked about how it's not to be in our own power, but in the Lord's power. Verse 11, he says, To put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And we talked about how the armor has already been provided, but we have to put it on. Sometimes to put it on and for our armor to fit correctly, we first have to take off or put off some things, which we've talked about. And then he goes on to identify our enemy here in verse number 12. Notice what he says. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. There's our enemy. 
Now, unfortunately, not any of those things that we can see. Amen? Um, so we, we have to trust in God and God's provision to fight those battles for us. Amen? Uh, look to your left and look to your right this morning and say, you're not my enemy. Amen. We're not each other's enemy. Amen. It's not us that we're fighting against. Sometimes we lose sight of that, but, uh, you know, the devil wants us to fight against each other and fight with each other and all of those types of things. But we are not our own enemy. He is. The devil is. Amen. And all of his minions. He is our enemy. Now notice in verse number 13, he says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. And we've talked about the truth and how everything hinges on the truth and how important the truth is. Amen. The devil has done everything he can to destroy God's truth. But it's important for us to not only understand God's truth, but to cling to the truth, amen, and not to fall away from the truth as the Bible predicts would happen in the last days. Now notice he goes on to say, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And we talked about how that wasn't our righteousness, that that was the righteousness of God. And in verse 15, we come to the next piece this morning, and notice what he says, "...and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace." "...and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace." Now, again, when we look at the armor of God, we begin to notice the words being used as much as we do the actual armor. We've seen words like truth, righteousness, faith, prayer, which are all the subjects of the armor. Now think about this for just a second. A lot of times when you hear this preached, you, we only think about the armor. We only think about the breastplate. We only think about our shoes. We only think about the shield or, or the helmet of salvation or those types of things. And, and somehow we think that those are the subjects of the armor. The, the armor itself is the actual subject that God wants us to focus on. But if you'll notice that every one of these have a word that corresponds with each piece of this armor, the helmet of salvation, the shoes shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the breastplate. It's not just the breastplate, it's the breastplate of righteousness. Loins girt about. It's not just the belt, but it's the belt of truth. Amen. So we have each of these words that goes with each of these pieces of armor that are just as important as the actual piece of armor itself. Now, you're going to have to excuse me a little bit. I got me some water, but I might lose my voice. Amen. <clears throat> so I'm going to do the best I can. <clears throat> but notice he says that, uh, that having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, when you look at most commentators or most scholars, when they write about the preparation of the gospel of peace, they're only talking about the gospel. Amen? And I know the verse in Romans when it talks about how beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel and all of those verses that sometimes that people look at. But when we look at this verse and we begin to break it down, what it's talking about I think that, that what Paul is saying might give us a little different meaning sometimes than what is normally um, taken to, the, to be the context of what he's trying to say here. Now notice what he says. He says to have your feet shod. Amen. Your feet shod. The word shod means to bind under one's feet. Being shod affects how you walk. It's, any of y'all ever tried to walk without shoes before? Now, for some reason, when I was a little kid, I could run around everywhere barefooted. It wouldn't bother me. I could run across rocks. I could run across stickers. It didn't bother me a bit. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And I've noticed that as I started getting older, now I try to walk outside on rocks, and now I sound like a little girl. Like, oh, ee, oh, every time, right? But uh, you say, why? It doesn't work very good. When I walk outside nowadays, trust me, it's very, very rarely that I'm going to walk outside without something on my feet. You say, why? Because shoes protect our feet. Amen? 
uh, any of y'all ever rode horses before? I have a horse. Matter of fact, my brother-in-law called me on the way up here uh, about my horse. And uh, I've only got one horse left. He's mine. And uh, his name's Buster. Amen. And he's an Appaloosa. And uh, he's about as hard-headed as one, too. But, but anyways, uh, he's a good horse. But uh, what do we do to our horses? Well, we, we put shoes on them. Why? To protect their feet. Amen. Uh, a lot of y'all may work at the mill or work out in the woods or work at some sort of job to where it requires you to have some sort of protective uh, uh, boots or something like that. Maybe steel-toed shoes or steel-toed boots or something like that. You say, why? It's to protect your feet. Amen? Amen. Any of y'all ever walked 50 miles before? No. <laughs> well, let me tell you, it's not fun. I walked 100 miles one time. Not by choice. Amen. Let me just go ahead and throw that out there for you. And it was 25 miles broken down over four days. But it was called the 100 mile hump. So we had our packs on our back and we walked 100 miles, 25 miles a day for four days straight. And, uh, and then I got real stupid and uh, I went and tried out for these units in the Army that uh, like to make you walk long distances for some reason. I wasn't very smart. Amen. And uh, so I used to walk long distances. And you know what I found out? I found out that uh, if you did not take care of your feet, you was going to be in trouble. Amen? Uh, matter of fact, sometimes uh, I didn't take care of my feet and I've walked so much where I would literally rub blisters completely raw and I'd be bleeding through my boots. It would be so bad. And you say, well, how in the world did you walk? I don't really know looking back at it. I was dumb, I guess. I really don't know. But they always told me, you just suck it up and keep going. That was all I knew to do. I sucked it up and kept going. The point I'm trying to make is, is that um, a good pair of shoes is invaluable. Amen? Any of y'all work at jobs to where you have to stand up a, a lot or stand up all day? Uh, I see nurses a lot. They'll, they make sure that they have a good pair of shoes. Why? Because they're always on their feet, right? Feet are very important. Right? If your feet are affected then it affects the rest of our body. If we cannot walk, if we cannot stand, then it's going to affect everything else that we do. Amen? Yeah. Did you know it's the same way in our spiritual walk as well? It's the same way with our spiritual walk. So notice what he says, having your feet shod. Shod, now notice what he says, with not the gospel, but with the preparation. With the preparation. Or in other words, not only to be shod, but to be prepared. Preparation. Having a solid foundation or a firm knowledge of something. You say, why are you saying this? Hang with me and I'll show you. He goes on to say the preparation of the gospel. Now notice what he says. Of peace. Amen. Peace. The good news of peace. Now I want you to think about that. I want us to think about this, break it down, and put it in the context that he's writing it. Having your feet shod, having your feet bound about or wrapped up about, protected with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In other words, what he's saying is, is that we need to bind or shod our feet with the good news of peace. Now you say, how in the world does that have anything to do with the armor of God? Now remember... How the devil operates, how the devil works. We put on these armors to quench the fiery darts or to stop the wiles, the trickery of the devil. Now how does the devil want to trick us? Where is his number one place that he wants to fight us? Where's the number one place that he always goes after and attacks? Well, it's right here. Amen? Right here between our, our ears. He wants to attack our minds. He wants to attack our hearts. Yes, He wants to attack all of these things and, and, and get all of these things against us to get our attention, to get us distracted, to get us to where we're no longer paying attention to God, but instead we're now paying attention to ourselves or to our injuries or to the world or frankly to the devil. Are you with me? That's what He wants to do. He's throwing all of these darts at us. 
All of these fiery darts. And He's trying to get us. He's trying to get one through. Amen? If He can get one through, remember when we talked about the breastplate of righteousness? And it talks about those fiery darts, how I talked, and remember when we talked about a couple of Sundays ago, how we talked about those fiery arrows, and it wasn't necessarily just the arrow and the penetration of the arrow that would do the damage. Instead, it was the fire and everything that would come afterwards, the spreading. The second and third order effects of those fiery darts were just as deadly or hurtful as the puncture itself. Y'all remember? You say, what in the world is having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace? What in the world is it that we have to do? Or what, what is so important about this is because we have to cover and protect our feet. You say, what? We've got to protect the steps that we take. You say, with what? With peace. Shod with the preparation of the gospel or the good news of peace. You say, why? Why is so Peace so important to us. You'll never realize it until you don't have it anymore. Amen? Amen? The devil wants us not to have any peace. Think about this. The devil instead wants us to be scared. I'm going to have to take this thing off. Y'all okay? He wants us to be nervous. He wants us to be anxious. He wants us to be upset, defeated, discouraged, downtrodden. He wants us to be worried. The devil wants to do everything that he can to rob us of our peace. Amen? I was thinking about this this morning. <clears throat> How many Christians, even that I talk to and know of today that doesn't have any peace in their lives. Amen? The world definitely doesn't have any peace right now. That doesn't take very long to realize, right? Just turn the TV on real quick. You'll figure out in about two seconds that the world has no peace. Right? It's all chaos. You say, why? Because the devil's running everything. Amen? That's why there's all the chaos. That's why there's all the confusion. That's why there's everything that's going to look when you take a look at even a lot of our churches and our Christians and how defeated and discouraged and everything that we get sometimes, you say, why? Because the devil wants to do everything he can to rob us, to take from us. The field cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Listen, that is all that the devil wants to do. If he can rob us of our peace, of our joy, of our happiness, all of these things, amen? And if He can get us upset and worried and anxious and nervous, depressed, <coughs> all of these things that He wants to get us and take the place of our peace, then again, He's won those small battles. Amen? Amen. You say, how is it that we can have peace? How is it that we can have peace? Easy. Amen? Amen. Our Lord and Savior is called... The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. Number one, can I tell you this morning that you need to know our, uh, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because He is the Prince of Peace. Take your Bibles real quick. Come to John chapter number 14. John chapter number 14. I'm trying not to lose my voice this morning, so I apologize. My voice is all crackly and... Y'all remember what the Lord said? John chapter number 14, look at, uh, look at uh, verse number uh, 23. John 14, verse number 23. Everybody there? <clears throat> not only is the Lord called the Prince of Peace, but notice what He says here in John chapter number 14 as He's preparing them. Notice in verse number 23, he says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him, and he will come unto him, and make our abode with him. And he that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the words uh, which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. Verse 26. 
But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Notice verse 27. Notice what he says. Peace. He doesn't say chaos and confusion. Right? Peace I leave with you. He says, My peace I give unto you, not as the world give, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You say, why? Because he knows that's exactly what the devil wants to do. He wants us to be troubled. He wants us to, to be robbed of our peace. He wants us to be troubled and afraid and all of these things instead. But you know what? The Lord said, peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives you. My peace is different. Amen? Verse 28, he says, Ye have heard now how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, and for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you that before it come to pass, that when it has come to pass, you might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me, but the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father giveth me com a commandment, even so I do. Arise, and let us go hence. You see what he wants is peace for us. Come to John 16 real quick. John chapter 16. Look in verse number 33. John 16, verse 33, the Lord says again, He says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And you know what the Lord said? He says, if I have overcome the, Lord, the world, then guess what? You will too. Amen. And when the Lord makes a promise, amen, that's one of the things that can give you peace, hopefully, is that when the Lord makes a promise, you can trust it. Amen. He says, I go away to prepare a place for you. And someday I'll come back. You say, what should that do? I don't know about y'all, but that brings me peace. That gives me peace. You say, why? Because no matter what's happening, no matter what's going on, no matter what Russia's doing, no matter what Ukraine's doing, no matter what's going on in the world or how the economy is or how the stock market is or any of those things, you say, at the end of the day, all that matters is I can have peace knowing that the Lord's coming back someday. It gives me peace. Amen. Well, don't you see all the stuff? Yeah, I see all the stuff's going on, but you know what? I know what the Lord said. He says, I come to give you peace. And you know what I've learned? I've learned that when I don't have peace, it's not from the Lord. It's from the devil. Amen? Amen. It's from the devil. He says, I come to give you my peace. And my peace isn't like the peace that the world tries to give you. This is what the world tries to tell you. If you got enough money in the bank, guess what? Oh, well, you can have some peace knowing you got enough. Your 401k is good. Let me tell you something. If you're trusting in your 401k, then, whoo, where have you been at the last couple of years? You better put you some stock in that heavenly 401k. Amen. If you're trusting in, in, in the stock market or some of these things, look, you're trusting in the, your trust is in the wrong thing, man. No wonder you ain't never got no peace. Every time something happens, you're freaking out. I lost half my 401k. Why? I'll tell you why. If your trust was in the Lord, it wouldn't matter as much. Amen? Amen. Why? Because He's going to give you that peace because I know what He said. He's going to take care of me regardless. The government's not your Savior. Jesus is. Amen, preacher. Peace. 
Psalm 29 real fast. Psalm 29. I'll tell you what, stop, stop off while we're coming backwards. Come off to Luke chapter number 2. Luke chapter number 2 means we're getting into this season, right? Black Friday, right? What's today? Black Friday? Is it Brown Sunday or something? Tomorrow Cyber Monday. What's Tuesday, Brother John? Have they made up a name for it yet? Any of y'all get up at like midnight and go shopping or whatever? I always love that, you know, Christians, they get up, oh, thank God you've blessed me with so much come Thursday and on Friday at midnight they're punching people in the face for a TV at Walmart, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. I promise you, there ain't a TV cheap enough. Amanda, Amanda went to, uh, Amanda wanted to take the girls to Hot Springs on uh, one, one, whatever day it was. I, I said, nah, I ain't going. You're crazy. I'm not that dumb, and I don't need anything. There's nothing over there I need. <clears throat> but you always see those stories of people getting in fights and all that stuff, you know, over all the stuff. And it's like, why, why? I don't even know why people even get caught up in it. But, um, but I did hear a lot of people say that they wasn't as many people out and all that stuff this year as normally. I said, yeah, nobody could afford nothing this year. <laughs> so, but you know what? We still got a lot to be thankful for and we're still rich. You say, why? Because my treasure's not here. My treasure's laid up in heaven. Amen. Did I tell you Luke chapter number 2? Look at verse number 14. Y'all know the story. It's read every Christmas, right? <coughs> Notice what the Bible says. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Notice what it says about the Lord's birth. Peace. Peace. And goodwill toward men. Now, I do have a side question about the parade, the Christmas parade. Are you allowed to throw candy and stuff? Just, just making sure they outlawed that in, in Pocahontas. They could no longer throw candy from a parade. I said, well, that's half, that's half the fun. <laughs> but anyways, um, I will help any way that I can. So I look forward to it. Psalm 29. Psalm 29. Look at verse number 11. Psalm 29, verse number 11. What time we got? 10 minutes? 12, 13 minutes? Any y'all ever heard of them on cloud shoes? Y'all know what shoes I'm talking about? The younger ones. Some of the younger ones know what I'm talking about. Hocus. You ever heard of Hocus? Well, that's the new shoes out nowadays. The on clouds. <clears throat> I, have, uh, I have flat arches. My, my arches are completely flat on both of my feet. I have no arches on either one of them. If I was to take my shoes off right now, you'd probably be like, what in the world? How are you even walk? So a good pair of shoes means everything to me. Um, so I used to get the hokas back when I used to run and do all that craziness. I'd buy those hokas, but I'd have that much cushion on the bottom of them. So I look goofy every time. But nonetheless, shoes are very important to me. Amen. Psalm 29, notice verse number 11. And notice what the Bible says, The Lord will give strength unto His people, and the Lord will bless His people with what? With peace. With peace. Mark chapter number 5. Come to Mark chapter number 5. Mark chapter number 5. I'll show you one more. I'll explain a few things and, and we'll wrap it up, okay? Mark chapter number 5. <clears throat> 
Y'all remember the story right before this story? Jesus is going across the, the sea, and the wind and the storm arose. And they went and wake Jesus up, say, Master, carest not that thou perish? And he wakes up and he says, What does he say? Peace. Peace, be still. And the winds go, and the waves subside. Peace. Now, I ain't going to lie, if somebody come woke me up screaming and yelling at me, peace would probably be the last thing I'd be saying first. Amen? <laughs> but what are you idiots doing? I'm trying to sleep. And that's probably what I'd have said, but it's a good thing I'm not the Lord. Amen? Mark chapter number 5, look at verse number... Uh, <clears throat> Look at verse number 25. Mark 5, verse 25. Y'all know the story of the woman with the issue of blood. Twelve years, verse 26, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. And when she had heard of Jesus, she came in and the press behind and touched His garment. For she said, If I may touch but His clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in Himself that virtue had gone out of Him, turned, turned Him about in the press and said, Who touched My clothes? And His disciples said unto Him, Thou seest the multitude thronging Thee, and sayest Thou, Who touched Me? And He looked round about to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before Him and told Him all the truth. And notice what the Lord said. She had been healed of this disease. And notice what happens after you get healed of this disease. Verse number 34, And He said unto her daughter, Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go and worry and be anxious and have great concern and be nervous. And all of these things, is that what He said? Nope. He says, go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Amen? Amen. Isn't that something? So that's what happens when the Lord comes. He brings peace. Peace. This peace here in a lot of other places, as y'all have heard it, Hebrew word called shalom. Shalom. It means contentment, completeness, wholeness, tranquility, harmony, rest. The absence of agitation or discord. Shalom. Peace. The Lord gives us peace in this troubled world. Amen. You know what the devil wants to do? The devil wants to do everything he can to rob us of our peace. Love, joy. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Peace, right? Peace and having your feet shod. Having that peace bound upon your feet, wound to your feet, protecting your feet. Why? Because we go about our daily walk. Guess what? The devil's doing everything he can to say, hey, yeah, you should be discouraged about that. Nah, just take a look around. He comes over here and the devil says, hey, hey, don't you remember that? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Look at oh so-and-so, don't you know, just, you know, look at what they're doing. The devil comes over here and he says, hey, hey, remember you can't pay your bills this week. Remember there's not enough money left in the bank. The devil comes over here and he says, hey, look at everything that's going on in the world, man. Look at Ukraine and Russia and all those morons in Washington, D.C. That's right, I said morons. All them morons in Washington, D.C., look at all this stuff's going on, man. Shouldn't you be worried and look at everything that's going on? Shouldn't you get upset? 
But you know what God says? God says, hey, bind my peace to your feet. Shod with the preparation of the gospel, the good news of peace. The Lord says, I give you peace. Amen? Amen. I give you peace. If you've got His truth, and you've got the breastplate of righteousness, you can have peace. in your Christian walk, in your daily walk, knowing that the Lord <laughs> is the Prince of Peace. Amen? Amen. Amen? The Lord is the Prince of Peace. Christian, can I remind you this week when the devil begins to start shooting those fiery darts at you, you say, you know what, devil? I know what the Lord said. I remember the Lord's promises. I remember that the Lord said that He would never leave me or forsake me. Hey, I remember how the, the, the Scriptures say that He's a brother. He is like a brother or sticketh closer than a brother. Amen? I remember how that He said that He would take care and provide for those of His children that were His. Amen? I remember how He said that regardless of everything that's going on in this world, I remember the Lord said that in this world ye shall have tribulation, but I have overcome the world, and so shall you. Well, look at everything that's going on, preacher. Everything's going to hell. Yes, but you know what? Jesus says, oh, but it's all coming together. And someday I'm coming back. Amen? Someday I'm coming back. You know what I do when things begin to look dimmer and dimmer and darker and darker? I say, it's getting closer and closer. Amen? You say, why? I've got my feet shod with peace. Amen. Amen. I've got my feet shod with peace. Would you stand with me this morning as musicians come? Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. I don't know where you're at in your walk this morning, but I can tell you this. You'll never know peace until you know the Lord, the Prince of Peace. Amen? You'll never know peace until you know the Prince of Peace. You say, how is it that some people can go through all of the things that they go through in their life? How is it that, that, that Christians can, can lose a loved one? That Christians can, can suffer loss and go through all of these things? Maybe go through health issues or all of these things, but yet somehow still have peace through all of it? I'll tell you why. It's because their feet are shod with the, God, the preparation of the gospel of peace. They know the prince of peace. They know the giver of peace. True peace. And it's not the peace that the world tries to offer. It's only the peace that the prince of peace can give. Amen? You need to know the prince of peace. If you never have any peace in your life, there may be a reason why. Maybe you don't know the prince of peace. I can tell you that if your life is chaos, nothing but chaos, maybe it's time to know the Prince of Peace. Amen? You say, will everything go great, preacher? No, I'm not telling you that everything goes great just because you become a Christian or any of that kind of stuff, but what I'm telling you is, is that you can have peace even in the midst of chaos. <coughs> in the midst of tribulation and trouble, you can have peace. Amen? Do you know Him this morning? The Prince of Peace. The Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to know you. He died for you. All you got to do is accept Him by faith. Understand that you're a sinner. Ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins and save you. Christian, this is for you. Maybe some of y'all have been without peace in your life. I don't know. It's easy for the devil to get us discouraged and distracted and 
get us to lose our peace and get us anxious and worried and all of those things that we like to be all of the time. And you know what the Lord says? The Lord says, come unto me. Come unto me. Amen? You say, why? He'll give you peace. Some of you, some of you Christians have been without peace for a while. You say, why? Because you haven't given it to the Prince of Peace. He's here this morning. If you'll just take it to Him and give it to Him, He can give you peace. And you can find rest for your souls. Amen? Amen. Father, I preach what You laid on my heart this morning. I just pray that if there's one here in our midst this morning that doesn't know You as Lord and Savior, I pray the day would be the day of salvation. Father, I pray for the Christian here that is absent, that has peace that's absent from their hearts this morning. And God, I just pray that You would be with them, comfort them, remind them that, Lord, the world doesn't offer peace, doesn't give the peace that You give, that only You can give. And God, I pray if there be any of Your kids this morning that are burdened, downtrodden, discouraged, disappointed, whatever the case is, Lord, I pray that, uh, that they would just give it to You and they can find peace in their hearts. God, we love You and we thank You for everything You are for us. Thank You for this armor. Thank You for our feet that are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And we'll thank You and we'll praise You in Jesus' name. Amen.